What's happening, Fuchsia friends? Today we're doing a little lure talk because I got a new mold in from Do It Molds. This little jig head, piece of terminal tackle. Kind of reminds me of the VMC Moon Eye jig, if you guys know those. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how I put it together, some of the materials I used and such, how I rig it up, and then finally go over how I fish it and a combo or a couple combos that I recommend for fishing it on. So, enough yap and let's take a closer look. All right, and the new mold that we have in here is the Round SE Jig. So when you open it up and look at it, you can see what I was talking about. Kind of looks like that VMC Moon Eye Jig. Um, there's a couple different sizes of these. I got the one that goes from 1 8 all the way up to 5 8 in size. You can see those there. 1 8 quarter, 5 16 3 8 half, and 5 8 There's also a smaller one, I think, that starts at something really small. I don't remember, goes up to like 3 16th. But I thought this would be good for what I want to use it for. And making these is super easy. You just need to pick a hook. Now, one thing with the hooks, I started using these, the Mustad uh, 3, 3 2 5 7 oh. These hooks suck. Like, they're these bronze hooks, and none of them are sharp. Like, I'm going to have to sharpen all these that I made. Luckily, I also got some of the do it. These are the same ones that I use for that little tiny finesse swim bait head. This one, this is the same hook that I used in these. I like this little swim bait head. It's got the screw on lock or a screw on for the safe, soft plastic. And then the hooks are super sharp. I really like this hook a lot. It's kind of that O'Shaughnessy bend you can see here. Like that, how it kind of goes up at a, an aggressive J style, I guess. Anywho, that's that hook in the exact same jig head and it makes a huge difference. I like that one a lot better. These you can see are sticky, sticky sharp. Really like that hook. So I would recommend using these, the 10111 hook. Um, I like it a ton better. And this is another one of those jig heads, just like the darter head that you all saw before. It's just put the hook in, close it, pour the lead, and that's it. So I didn't do a video making it. Y'all have seen that a number of times. Super easy. Okay, the next step after you've got them all poured, you got a powder pan, and I use the Protec paints over there at Do It. Super easy. You've seen it before. You just uh, heat the jig head up, dip it in there, and they're all done. The thing that I always do is bake these. Now this is, I've got to shout out Kuda again over at Jig Squad for sharing me the company, the guy that makes these awesome little unit to put your jig heads up when you put them in your toaster oven, you bake them like this, standing up. So if there's a, a little bit too much paint, it just runs down the shank of it, and you're not even gonna see it. You can see these have the little lead built-in collar, so if you wanted to wrap these with like, you know, jig uh, tying material, you can make little skirted jigs and stuff. I'm just leaving them as little um, swim bait. And you're gonna see some of the other rigs here, things you could use it for, but kind of like a swim bait head. And then after you've got them all baked, think I do 350 at like 15 minutes, uh, and that turns out good form. Then once you're done with that, you have to turn them into something like this, putting the actual eye on it. Now again, I use the shrink tubing like I've showed you before on the eye of the hook. That way they're nice and clean. You don't have to clean them out. There's no excuse for dirty eye holes on these. And that's what you look like with the eye on it. It really brings it to life. I think it gives it a really cool look. Um, Do It's got a number of different eyes out there. That's what this one is, red, small E, so I don't remember. They've got the four millimeter and the six millimeter. I'm not sure why they skipped five millimeter because that's one of the absolute like most used when I'm painting crankbaits and stuff. So have to find those somewhere else. This is what it looks like with the little four millimeter that they have and that's what the, uh, the five millimeter. So it just kind of gives it that larger eye look. Uh, and that's on the smaller one, the smallest size uh, in the mold. And this is compared to the larger size in the mold with that five millimeter, you can see how it looks. And then finally, that's the five millimeter eye here versus the six millimeter eye on this one. So it's pretty fun to get the eyes on it. It really brings them like a whole new dimension. Do you need it? Nah, like dad was saying, couldn't you just put like some Sharpie there to make the eye? Yeah, you could. You could even dot some little uh, like black powder paint in there and coat it on before. Whatever you want to do. I like the eyes. I think it brings them to life. I already have them from painting, but do what you like. Speaking of painting, I like messing with them a little bit. I take a paintbrush and I took some of the, I dipped it in pearl white first. And then took a paintbrush and dipped on or dropped on just a little dusting of chartreuse there. And on the top, I think this is the dragonfly color. It's got like glitter in it. Give me a little sexy shad color, huh? Okay, so to rig these up, how do I rig my swim bait heads to make sure they're always straight? And there's a number of different uh, plastics you could use with this. Doesn't have to be a swim bait, but I put it on here to pretend like it was already set in there, just like that. I take my thumb and mark the point about where it's going to come out. Put my hook point in there, tear just a little bit of the back of plastic. That's where I know the hook needs to come out. I'm going to go in the nose of it there, and this is where I see a lot of people mess up. Once they go to this, they start like bending and moving. You don't want to scrunch it up. So as you're going, keep your fingers moving down and guiding it in the middle. See there, that's the open spot right there where I broke the plastic. So I know it needs to come straight out the back there, like so. And there you go. you got a nice straight rigged little swim bait. Now one thing I thought was interesting, these are a couple that I made uh, with the Plastisol over it. Do it. This is the regular. See how it's uh, kind of stiff? And this is the super soft. Definitely a difference in 
softness there you can see so that's fun too just to mess with different you know hardness or softness of plastic these do have more action especially at a slower speed so that's something to keep in mind if you're going to be fishing cold water or something you might want to look into uh, softer plastic now not only can you do swim baits on this i think this will be an extremely popular mold for this you know the whole forward facing sonar vertical jigging technique looks pretty sweet and in the water looks very natural bounce that around looks just like a minnow really like the look of that now you could go old school this is what i used to do pull the backs off the uh, the back of my trick worms and stuff and use them as little makeshift ned rig type deals could almost do the whole jig worm thing you know up in the north minnesota those guys throw the jig worm you know could be a little larger could throw a sinko on one of the bigger heads there you go a nice way to fish you know around the shore without spending a bunch of money use something you've already got and you could vertical jig this just as well you could rig that just like that make it look like a little manner heck you can go with a little craw on this a bunch of different things you can do but putting it together rigging it up super simple comment below and let me know what type of plastic would you throw on here for your next trip Okay, now that you've all got them made up and you're ready to hit the water, what is a good combo to fish on? Now, there's a ton of different options. I'm kind of going to go over one and give you my thought process when I'm looking at this. So, for me, I picked up the mold where I'm going to use that eighth, um, you know, maybe a couple other sizes, but probably up to a quarter, and I'm really not going to use any more than that. Now, if you're somebody fishing a boat, you know, out deeper, you're looking to vertical jig, you might want to use those heavier ones to get it down quicker, right? Um, sometimes you might want to adjust the fall, so it really just depends what you're doing. But, you know, if you're bank fishing using some of the lighter ones, this is something that I'd go with. This is the Dobbins Caden. I think I showed you this when I was going with those darter heads. An eighth all the way up to a half ounce. It's a medium light. It doesn't necessarily feel like that. Some of the Dobbins rods are a little bit softer, but this feels pretty good. Kind of like a soft medium. Um, some of the medium lights you feel are, are real whippy. They feel almost too light. And it really depends, again, on what you prefer and what you're using. But for me, this is a great one. This one I showed you last time, you know, the Shimano Miravel. Need to get this one out and try it. It's the new Shimano Sedona, and the thing feels dang good. And the, the big thing with these, you know, you might feel it. It might be smooth as butter, but the drag has to work well. And I've had good luck on my Shimanos. Now, you could go Daiwa, lose. There's a whole bunch out there. Just depends on what you like. But the Next Save, the Sedona, all the way up to the Miravel are all great reels in the Shimano line if you're looking for a good spinning reel. Okay, now when it comes to the line on these, I personally like going braid to a leader. So this is the Spinex braid. Uh, this is a 12 pound. I like how they have kind of a medium. Usually 10 to 15 pounds what I use on my, you know, kind of medium-ish um, spinning rods. I don't want to use too heavy of a line because with a smaller lure like that, you can kind of mess with the action of it. You know, if you were trying to throw it on 20 pound mono or something like that, um, it's not going to get down. It kind of has the line effect to it. So I want the lure to do its own thing, right? So I want to try to go with as light a line as I can get away with. The good thing about going braid to a leader, so I go braid to, you probably can't see this, but a fluorocarbon leader there, you can change that up. Usually for me, it's going to be an eight pound. Um, if you were with those one eighth ounce lures, and you really wanted it to have a bunch of action. You could drop down to six pound. The big thing with line is I'm using my line, the poundage, uh, bumping up based on what I'm around. So if I'm fishing around a bunch of wood, uh, you know, things where I could get caught up, dock pilings, dock posts and stuff, I'll probably bump up to 10 pound, even maybe 12 pound fluorocarbon uh, because it's for what I'm around. I can land a fish on, you know, three pound, two pound mono. I do that ice fishing all the time, but that's out in the open. You know, once you get that light line mixed up in sticks and dock stuffs and concrete and uh, you're breaking off. So I try to switch it up and mix it up. And with the 10 pound braid to that fluorocarbon leader, I have that flexibility, but I've also got the sensitivity of the braid. There is no disputing braid is the most sensitive, um, but you know, fish can see it. It's, it's got its own drawbacks. So that's why I like going braid to a leader. Okay, when you get out on the water to fish these, you know, I think people like to overcomplicate fishing, you know, a finesse rig like this. Put a paddle tail on it, put a little straight tail worm on it, and I can go back and forth between, you know, just casting it out and retrieving it. I can give it little pops. So as I'm reeling in and pop, 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 pop my line like that, make that lure go up and down. I can give it slight raises, reel it and drop it, slight raises so it's going along and then you might find if, oh, they're always hitting it when I'm dropping my rod, maybe it's the drop. You know, you might want to go down to something a little bit lighter so it falls slower. Um, another thing when you're working it on the bottom, messing with your retrieve speed. So when I throw it out there and I'm hopping it on the bottom, I see some people working it like this, bouncing on the bottom, that thing's going nung, 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 like drank a Red Bull. Slow down with it. I go between dragging it to small hopping it. You can try larger hops. You can try, you know, bouncing a couple times, swim it, let it just sit. Because the pause, the amount of pause you have in there is just as important oftentimes as how fast or how slow you're reeling it. Um, you know, especially when it gets colder. Uh, the last trip I was out with the Ned Rig, all the fish grab it when it's just sitting there, right? So they, they don't want a bunch of action. It's just sitting there doing nothing. 
they nail it. So those are a few things. Don't be afraid to mix up your stuff and don't overcomplicate it. The biggest thing is time on the water. Get out there and fish. All right, fishing friends, there you have it. The round SE, just a little ball head jig mold. It's got the slightly recessed eyes there. You can tie jig skirting on it, but it's really gonna be kind of a lure for plastics like this for me. Comment below and let me know what rig did you like the best? You know, would you throw your paddle tails on this? Do you like the look of this? you know, being straight up and down for the sonar vertical type fishing. Would you put a worm on it or would you go something completely different? I mean, the thing about this is you can really use it as a little shaky head. You could use it as a, you know, a paddle bait head, a bunch of different stuff you could do to it. A pretty cool little versatile lure. All right, today's subscribe fishing friend is Indiana Sportsman. Uh, he missed my live the other night, said he ended up falling asleep from uh, throwing back a too many pops the other night. But hey, listen, I support, or I appreciate everybody who supports me on those lives. You know, uh, I've been doing this for a long time. The amount of people that still watch support me, it blows me away you know, I'm just a dude here in Iowa making stuff in my basement making videos so it means a lot to me I appreciate all the feedback I get from people saying you know I've helped him learn how to use a bait caster or learned how to you know make make stuff right you know showed them how to do this and they thought wow I found it and it's a great way to you know have another hobby in the winter during the winter like this I love tinkering with baits making baits jig heads plastic you have the time to do that you know I just throw my little heater out in the garage pop the garage door a little bit and go out there and start making stuff. So, you know, during the winter like this, where you can't maybe get out on the boat and stuff, or times um, a little less than you used to have going out fishing, uh, picking up something like this and making baits is a fun way to stay in the fishing hobby to cure that old fishing itch. So anyway, that's enough for me. Love y'all, thanks for watching. I gotta edit. Uh, until next time. Mm -hmm.